Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, thanks for joining me today on Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson and we're going to have a great show. Dr. Jim Lillix here and we're going to talk about degenerative joint disease in horses. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you enjoy the show and we'll see you right after these messages. As dependable as the sunrise in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Jim, thanks for being here. Sure, thanks for having me. Folks, this is Dr. Jim Lillick, and he is an associate professor here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. He is an equine surgeon and does a lot of research on things that all equine, all bones, Anything that has to do with making them go faster. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what Dr. Lillick will be doing. And, and we're tickled to death to have him on the show because he's a wealth of information about horses and about lameness and about, about different things. But today we're going to talk about degenerative joint disease, otherwise known as DJD. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a topic that, well, one of the biggest things that slows us down from using our horses throughout their lifespan is, or, and what we call wastage in the industry, is, is, is lameness or damage to joints, bones and, and, uh, and tendons, ligaments, etc. Also feed into that, it's musculoskeletal system, but uh, for sure the joint takes the beating because cartilage doesn't heal. And you, there's just so much misinformation out there uh, about this uh, problem. Um, and you just kind of want to get the definitions right so you know where we're coming from. And when you talk about a degenerative condition, that means that the, the entire joint is paying a penalty, is, is damaged, is diseased. So not only is it the bone and the cartilage, but it's also the joint capsule or the other soft tissues around it. So the entire package, the entire joint, is, is not right. So it's, it's hard tissue and soft tissue. And, uh, you know, we've just focused in on just, well, we're going to treat the cartilage because it doesn't heal and we want to save the cartilage. Well, once that goes, bones start to go bad and joint capsules sticking up. And the clinical signs when you get to that bad part, part of it are no different than you and I. We, we walk with a limp, we have a reduced range of motion, and, and we're not able to use the leg like it was designed to work. So uh, a lot of research has been out there just pointing at, you know, modifying the symptoms of the disease, but not trying to fix the disease, or certainly not trying to prevent the disease. So when it comes to veterinary medicine, uh, when, in particular horses, that we really have pushed the, uh, the forefront of research uh, because of what our performance animals are worth. So when we're looking at degenerative joint disease, just kind of give me a snapshot of what's going on inside that joint. So. Um, the, the joint is starting to collapse because the, you know, the cartilage is between the two, two bones, yep. right? So that's the smooth gliding surface that allows the, the body to work effortlessly. When, when that starts to be damaged, then you get some inflammation with that, so there's fluid. Then uh, the cartilage starts to wear in ways it wasn't supposed to wear. Uh, that in turn allows the bone to see mechanical forces that probably it shouldn't be seen, so it gets stiffer, it gets harder. Uh, then when that becomes a feed forward process, Mother Nature wants to slow down that motion in that joint, so she starts packing fibrosis and fibrous tissue around it, and in which case you lose range of motion, 
and the joint can no longer work like it once once was designed to, uh, and then you're at the end of the road, you're at the end stage. And with you and me, they can replace joints. We don't do that with horses. Not yet. Uh, anyway. Not yet anyway, right. So uh, some, some small animal species you can. Um, or you wind up amputating the leg to make the pain go away. Well, and that's just not possible. For no, no. You know. Let's take a break here, and when we come back, let's start getting into some of the therapies and, and things okay. that, with DJD. Very good. You're watching Doc Talk, Dr. Jim Malik, Dr. Dan Thompson. We'll be right back. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Holt Tripp, a Kentucky native, is a fourth-year student at Oklahoma State University Center for Veterinary Health Sciences. He is pursuing a dual DVM MBA program. After graduation, Holt hopes to own and operate a diversified research and consulting practice specializing in feedlot and stocker cattle production systems. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for Merck Animal Health. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here. Be sure to join me in Wichita, Kansas, September 15th and 16th, as myself, Dr. Tom Knopfsinger, and Dr. Mike Appley are gonna host Beef Today's Cowboy College. We're gonna talk about how to start cattle on feed and some of the new management techniques of getting calves started on feed. To register, go on the internet to www.beeftoday.com backslash cowboy college, get registered, and I'll see you in Wichita, Kansas, September 15th and 16th. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher. Get the new Hired Hand for yourself or become a distributor. Visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enriflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Jim Lilly, who is an equine surgeon and, and a specialist when it comes to equine uh, performance medicine in, in horses and otherwise we wouldn't call it equine performance no, medicine. Exactly. But anyway, um, what we're talking about is degenerative joint disease, and it's something that, that cripples horses, that, that cripples humans, but, but you know, there's some old therapies, old treatments that we used to try and, and probably don't work as well as what they wanted, but what are some of the things that we focus on? Well, I, I, th I think that there can be a, a, a potentially a happy medium between that. Bec you know, the old therapy was, you know, you rest, you use some ice, you co-apt it, and you elevate it. Well, we really can't do that. But horsemanship, good horsemanship, will go a long ways to get a lot of the inflammation out of an acute injury. All right. Okay. So, and then after that, um, we can use other medications, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, very, very popular drug that are still being used. Uh, reduce the inflammation, allow the swelling to come down, allow some of the, the, the what we call edema, the fluid, to go away, so the animal can use the leg better. Just just like us, we use the knee just a little bit better. We want to walk, and we need to use it because that begins the rehabilitation process. What are the some of the the non-steroidals that are most common? Well, most common, you know, there's certainly phenylbutazone has been around for a very long time. There's a ketoprofen, which is an ibuprofen type drug. Uh, the new COX-2 inhibitors in horses actually uh, are pretty beneficial. They're a little more pricey, but uh, anecdotal information will tell you that uh, a Prevacox 
or, uh, or you know, which is specific COX-2, which is a very, uh, or a newer generation anti-inflammatory, a, a better one, less hard on the gut. Uh, it works in horses. They, it, it, again, it's going to be, it's going to be price. You know? And it's something that we don't it, use it, in food animals. Right. I think that's the most important yeah. thing we need to get out there as well, and and work with your veterinarian. Right. Exactly. They'll, they'll Ban you know. Banamine would be the, uh, the, you know, the final drug in the arsenal. Um, it, you can't really stack them. You know, you can't give multiple doses, uh, or mo multiple different drugs to see if you can get a better benefit. Um, and then certainly steroids have been around for a very long period of time. These are cortical steroids. They're very potent anti-inflammatories. Uh, other disease or, or sorry, symptom modifying drugs would be hyaluronic acid or HA or even Adequan. And those, some of those come as feed supplements as well. Uh, I couldn't tell you exactly uh, the, the scientific basis why an oral supplement might make the animal better, might make us better, but some animals respond to it. So you can't necessarily discount it, but but they're expensive. My personal preference would be to use it directly into the joint that's injured, because uh, if I can get a medication I can inject, then I can reduce my total body exposure to the drug, and I'm doing I'm I'm really targeting the area that I want to treat. And it, but it takes expertise, and you have to get with your veterinarian in order to give those medications into the joint. That's a sterile procedure. And there's even a lot of veterinarians that don't do that. Right, I mean, exactly. You have to find someone that's, that's well versed, that does a lot of joint injections and things of that nature. And, and, and allow it to go, uh, you know, that horses are going to make their, their living for people uh, performing, you know, whether it's in the feedlot or at the rodeo or on the racetrack or having a trail ride and enjoying, enjoying Kansas, you yeah. know. So um, the, the worst thing is, you know, what you would want them to have is a poor quality of life. Yep. because of that injury. Yeah. You got it. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about some new research and new technology that's going on to treat degenerative joint disease with Dr. Jim Lillick. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica, Inc. Hello, folks. Dr. Nels Lindbergh here from Great Bend, Kansas with Production Animal Consultation and Animal Medical Center. Today's BQA Tip of the Day we're going to talk about pen surface management. And pen surface management doesn't just have to do with feed yards, it has to do with cow-calf producers that have any sort of pens, stalkers, starter yards, and feed yards. We all need to do a great job of taking care of our pen surfaces. We can often forget about them, we have many other things to take care of, but again, we want to maintain an excellent pen surface for these cattle. It's good for their welfare, it's excellent for animal health, and, and if we don't take care of them, can also negatively impact animal performance. We must groom these pens periodically. Pen populations, how often cattle are in them, will often dictate that. Bedding cattle will dictate that. If we're feeding them big round bales and pens, will dictate that. But again, we want to have a clean, dry pen surface for these cattle. Whether, again, whether it's a cow-calf herd and baby calves, feeder cattle, stalker cattle, whatever it may be. If we have a lot of buildup, whether it's manure, or feed particle or bales, bacteria, viruses sit in there and they continue to cohabitate and infect new cattle or the same cattle or baby calves creating unhealthy situations for all the animals. Let's do the right thing, take care of these pen surfaces, groom them frequently and make them look like this pen right here. Thank you much. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot, with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. 
Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Jim Lillick, and we're at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And today we're talking about the management, the diagnosis, the management, and the therapy of degenerative joint disease in, in horses. Something that's crippling to horses, it decreases performance, decreases quality of life, and, and we've gone through some of the old therapies that mask the symptoms, but now we're starting to get into maybe some things that are gonna change how we start to manage this disease and maybe even cure it. Well, we, I think we can do far better than what we've done before. Um, all the drugs that we mentioned are very important to help reestablish a normal environment in the joint or get it as normal as possible and, and basically slow the progression of the degeneration because it's going to happen. It's, it's just a part of aging in some regards. Uh, we're better at knowing how to rehabilitate a horse and, and a good horseman for lack of better terminology, you know, they just, somebody that knows that particular individual, knows how to train, knows how to keep the animal functional. Uh, that goes a long way. So veterinarians typically haven't necessarily always gotten involved in that part of it, but they're now getting much more involved in it because rehabilitation is a huge uh, science in, in human medicine, uh, as well as some of the newer therapies. Uh, and these would be what we call biologics, which would be stem cell therapies, uh, conditioned medias, conditioned serums, uh, basically allowing mother nature to to better direct and almost perfect the wound healing process. Uh, and maybe, and, and part of wound healing is actually, the, the final stage of it is, is remodeling. So we're gonna take something that we might not need, like a scar, and then turn it into something that was more normal. That might take years. Well, hopefully the newer generation therapies that were, are coming up go hand in hand with the earlier therapies we talked about, uh, and then focus in on rehabilitation and, and we wouldn't get a drug toxicity from a stem cell therapy. We wouldn't get a drug toxicity from a conditioned serum if we gave in the joint. Uh, it's probably just healthier for the body. If we can really get to the bottom of what exactly is happening when we use these biologics, uh, then I think we can go, go even further in, into, the, into the process of helping that animal out, or even us. We've got about a minute before we have to go to break. Can you help me and just, Let's just talk a little bit here about some of the things you're doing on rehabilitation with, with horses. Well, um, in the old days, you know, put them in a stall, they're, they're broken, right? Just put them in a stall. Horses are gregarious. They love their buddies. So sticking them in a stall can almost do more harm than good. Uh, if it's a devastating injury and, you know, it's catastrophic, they're going to have to stay in a stall because they need to heal. But if it's an injury that can be, uh, they can, where they can get out and actually have a modified training regime, that's probably the most beneficial thing that we can do. We don't run them hard, we don't run them long, we do small things to keep the body active. And it's no different than uh, you and I getting rehabilitation after a major joint surgery or something along that lines. Yeah. Uh, you need a good physical therapist. You yeah. know? So that's, that's the approach nowadays with most of our sports medicine in veterinary medicine that's, that's well, around the country. Let's take a break and we come back. I wanna wrap up with the the stem cell uh, because it, it is something that is hot not only in human medicine but 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 animal medicine and something we need yep. to do. I agree. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll be back here in a minute. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another and another and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. 
Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. It must be a, a, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope, and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living, obviously. But it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, and the reason we do it has been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Jim Lillick, who's an equine surgeon and sports medicine expert in for horses and I'm just intrigued because the more you hear about stem cell therapy and and things to treat arthritis and joint disease it's it's pretty fascinating stuff and and to think about being able to do that in in our horses is save a lot of lives right well I think it I think it's an exciting science for several on several um, you know from basic all the way up to applied clinical science um, so it, we've thought for some time that you can take certain cells from the body and they could potentially become a tissue. You know, if you, if you were able to harvest them, concentrate them, expand their numbers, and then re-inject them into injured uh, tissues or organs, that you would actually potentially regenerate that or, or allow that organ to regenerate. Um, I, th I think that that was simplistic when we first approached it uh, and, and it wasn't necessarily the case. Uh, what we believe is happening now is the cells that we put in there are great at um, directing traffic for wound healing. So instead of waiting on cells to come in to have that done, which the body has to do by sending in new blood vessels to heal an injury, um, you automatically have that right there. Right? So you're, you're kind of jumping some, or skipping some steps and you're speeding it up. And if we can speed that up and get the good stuff going before some of the scar tissue happens, then quite possibly we'll maximize that animal's ability or even our ability to heal an injury. Uh, and, and I'm talking in particular about you know, the musculoskeletal system, damage to the, to the bone, the joint, the tendons sometimes are still uh, you know, in that category as well. But if you can do that, then you don't have to go through some of these well, what, harsher, what, harsher, you know. What, what are you putting in there? Uh, it's, so basi it's, it's basically cells. Oh, so you can, harvest a, uh, you can harvest a stem cell from fat, from muscle. Um, it goes into the laboratory. We now are better off at finding which particular cells will expand. And you have to put them in the right uh, cocktail, the right bath, you know, in order for right. them to grow up quickly. And you can expand them very, very quickly instead of two weeks was the old time, now it's like two days. So you take them from the animal. From the animal. Put them in there, they grow up they in grow a couple up, days. They grow up, expand their numbers, and then they get injected right back into the injured tissue. Or in, 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 huh. in some instances, actually in, in, injected in the vascular uh, space. Um, we know less about that probably because we don't know exactly where they're all going, but they go to the sites of injury. There's evidence to say yes they do and there's evidence to say they just go general body, but, and that makes sense as well. Uh, do they stay 
in, in, in going to the tissue don't, don't know. But uh, um, that is the science behind it. And I, I think you're going to see a lot more come in the next years. Cool. You know, it's going to be really, really interesting. Well, I sure appreciate you being on the show. It was great being here. And we're going to have you back. Folks, right. Dr. Jim Lillick here at the Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine. If you want to know more about what Dr. Jim and I do here at K-State, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. You've been watching Doc Talk today. I'm glad that you joined us. I hope you enjoy the new uh, uh, backdrop. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.